cocoon, a utopia in the sky. The populace live a life of ease under the protection of almost godlike beings known as the Thal Sea. The lower world, Pulse, over which Cocoon floats, is believed to be a land both hostile and uninhabitable. One day, on Cocoon, a dangerous Pulse Thal Sea is uncovered in the seaside settlement of Bodum. The governing body, known as the Sanctum, announces that all residents of the town are now contaminated. The purge is enacted, legislation that requires every citizen from the affected area to be forcibly relocated to Pulse. The purge has begun. A band of young rebels emerges to oppose the army and its attempt to exile innocent civilians to Pulse. Moving through the midst of the confusion is Lightning, a soldier who fights against the Sanctum's forces, along with Saz, a middle-aged man with his own purpose. She makes her way towards the structure where the Pulse Val Sea was found. In that lower world vestige, her sister Sarah is being held prisoner. Others also converge on the same location. Snow, Sarah's fiance. Hope, the teenager who watched his mother perish. And Vanille, a young girl of unknown origin. All those who would play a part in Cocoon's future are unknowingly drawn together. Falsi possess the power to transform humans into a cursed Lassi. Both Lightning and Snow have entered the Vestige to rescue Sarah from just such a fate. As if guided by an unseen force, the would-be saviors arrive in the deepest part of the structure, along with Saz, Hope, and Vanille. There, the five discover a bewildered Sarah, only to witness her transformation into Crystal. Lightning, driven by rage at losing her sister, hurls herself at the Pulse Val Sea. She is joined in the battle by a determined Saz, who has his own reasons for wanting the Thal Sea destroyed. The battle with the Pulse Entity changes the destiny of the five new companions forever. They have become Lassi, cursed servants of the Thal Sea. All Lassi are given a focus. Those who complete this focus are turned into crystal. Those who fail, however, are doomed to become mindless monsters. Their master is an enemy of Cocoon. Are they now fated to destroy their own home? As the others sink into depression, only Snow retains a positive outlook. He believes that Sarah's last wish for them to protect Cocoon is their true focus. Snow stays behind to protect her crystal while Lightning and the rest attempt to break through the army's rapidly closing net. Lightning and her companions, now enemies of the state, are pursued by Sanctum forces. The former soldier makes a decision. Rather than be hunted down, she vows to take the fight to Cocoon's capital and slay the Falci in charge of the government. The young boy Hope, drawn by Lightning's strength, chooses to follow her. Saz and Vanille choose another route and flee through the vile peaks. Meanwhile, Snow is captured by an army unit under the guidance of a mysterious woman known as Fang. These soldiers are members of the cavalry, a group that professes to be an ally of Lassie. As part of their journey towards the capital and the Sanctum Falci, Lightning and Hope enter the Gabra Whitewood the Whitewood serves as an experimental facility for the army, but patrols here are few and infrequent. As they walk, Hope explains his reasons for being there. At Snow's urging, Hope's mother joined the battle at the Hanging Edge and was killed in the fighting. The grief-stricken youth had then chased Snow into the vestige. Lightning tries to counsel the young man, but Hope's desire to exact revenge on Snow burns brighter than ever.
With no place else to go, Saz and Vanille find themselves wandering the sunlit waterscape. Saz eventually spills his story to Vanille. He explains that he joined the fight for the sake of his son Dodge, who had been chosen as a sea servant by a Sanctum Falci. Saz thought that if he could defeat an enemy of Cocoon, he might release his son from his focus. After hearing his story, Vanille is consumed with guilt. Both she and Fang are pulseless and enemies of Cocoon. Their presence near the Sanctum Falci is the reason Dodge was cursed in the first place. However, she cannot bring herself to tell Saz the truth. With the help of the cavalry, Fang searches for the other Lassi. She has a debt to pay. Her lost memory and forgotten focus were the reason Sarah was cursed by the Falci. The Grand Pulse native later encounters Lightning in the city of Palampolum and apologizes for Sarah's fate. Lightning's response is a blow to the jaw. Elsewhere, Hope finally gets up the courage to confront Snow. The teenager is consumed with his lust for revenge and attacks the Nora leader. Despite the boy's actions, Snow puts himself in danger, protecting Hope from an army airstrike. The four Lissi later regroup at Hope's house and meet his father. They reconcile their differences and decide to work on finding a future rather than dwelling on the past. In Nautilus, the city of dreams, Saz and Vanille's frantic flight from the Sanctum comes to an abrupt end. Dodge, now in the custody of the army, has used his Lassie powers to track down his father. The boy turns to Crystal upon completing his focus to locate an enemy of Cocoon. A Psycom officer appears before the unbelieving Saz and tells him the truth. Vanille is the reason his son was made into a Lassie. Vanille admits her guilt. She offers no resistance when Saz raises his pistols to fire. But Saz realizes her death will change nothing and lets Vanille go. Such mercy is all he has left to give. Lightning joins Snow, Hope, and Fang in an assault on the Sanctum flagship. The cavalry has lent them its aid in rescuing the captured Saz and Vanille. After a long search, Fang is finally reunited with Vanille. The six Lassi then fight through the ship's defenses and come face to face with the Primarch, representative of the Sanctum. However, the truth that he reveals is beyond their wildest imagining. The Primarch, who they thought to be human, is actually a powerful Falci by the name of Barthandalus. The Falci also shocks them with the knowledge that their focus is, in fact, the destruction of Cocoon. Barthandalus guides the Lassi to a vestige hidden beneath the capital, where other truths await them. The companions encounter Sid Reigns, the commander of the cavalry, in the bowels of the monster-infested Fifth Ark. He explains that should they complete their focus and destroy Cocoon, then countless lives will be lost. This sacrifice is necessary to draw a deity known as the Maker back into the world. Reigns then reveals himself as a Lassie of Barthandalus. The soldiers of the cavalry had been mere puppets of the Falci. Now, however, the commander is acting under his own human will. To prevent Cocoon's destruction, he attacks Lightning and her friends. Although he is ultimately defeated, Rain still turns to Crystal. He shows them how the fate of the Lassie can be overcome. The six Lassie have crashed on Grand Pulse, the terrifying lower world that the people of Cocoon speak of in whispers. Seeking for a way to overcome their cruel fate, the companions travel to Erba, Fang and Vanille's hometown. There, they uncover an ancient prophecy that tells how Fang and Vanille attacked Cocoon several centuries in the past. It also speaks of how they entered into crystal stasis and later awoke, once again driven to destroy the floating shell. All their actions recorded and prophesied, but no mention of how to avert the catastrophe. 
But if they refuse to fight, then Cocoon will fall. Readying themselves for the conflict to come, the Lassi head for Cocoon's capital once more. Chaos rules in the capital city of Eden. Reigns, though he wishes for the independence of mankind, is a helpless tool of the Falci. And the soldiers of the cavalry who trusted him have now risen in revolt. They mean to slay Orphan, the Falci that lies at the center of Eden, unaware that its death would mean the destruction of Cocoon. To prevent this cruel catastrophe, Lightning and her fellow Lissi battle through the streets in pursuit of the vengeful soldiers. They finally catch up with the cavalry, only to see them transformed into hideous sea. Only one thing remains to be done. The Lissi must face Bahantos, the mastermind behind all that has transpired. Lightning and her companions claim victory over the mighty Barthandalus, but in doing so, awaken Orphan, the Falci who keeps Cocoon aloft. Their first battle with Orphan ends in failure, but through the sheer force of their belief, the Six rise to fight again. They have the power to make miracles happen and the strength to change their fate. Awakened to the power within them, the Lassi achieve the impossible and defeat Orphan. At the moment of the Falci's death, Cocoon begins to plummet towards Grand Pulse. Then a miracle occurs. Fang and Vanille undergo a transformation into a great crystal pillar that halts the fall of Cocoon. As the dust settles, Sarah is freed from her crystal stasis and greeted by Lightning's smiling face. Or so it was meant to be.